Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Bad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> I've been on longer rides, Mr. Dillon, but I can't remember any no dryer. Yeah, there's probably water in those cottonwoods over there, Chester. They'd better be. Of course, um, I haven't been by here in maybe a year. Oh, my, now don't say that, Mr. <laughs> Dillon. Uh, hey, look. Uh, oh, there's water, all right. Yeah, horses, two of them. Oh, sure. They wouldn't be in there otherwise, would they? No, not likely. Hey, those aren't range horses, either. No, sir, they sure ain't. Oh, them's the most beautiful animals I ever saw. Hey, there's a man with them. Yeah. He's going to saddle up. Say, he's awful well decked out for a cowboy, ain't he? Well, he sure looks better than we do. Come on. I ain't shaved in a week. Yeah, we'll be in Dodge tomorrow, Chester. Mm. Hello! You don't act very cordial. Yeah. All right, let's get on, Chester. Looking for water. Over there. Now, turn them loose, Chester. They'll find it. Yes, sir. Come on, get. That's a mighty fine pair of horses you got there, mister. They're all right. All right. Oh, them horses got blood in them if I ever seen it. So have I. And I'll fight anybody for these horses. Anybody at all. Well, now look, mister. We aren't after your horses. We're only admiring them. Hey, tell me something. Yeah. You ever shoot a man in the back? What? I said, did you ever shoot a man in the back? Well, I don't know who you think I am, mister, but I never shot anybody in the back. I believe you. Hey, wait a minute. I said I believe you, didn't I? Why, he's chancing we're going to shoot him, Mr. Dillon. Look at him go. Come on, we better hurry. No, Chester. Yeah, but he'll get away. We can't stop him, not on those tired animals of ours and him with a pair of thoroughbreds. Well, we can track him. He's a sure enough horse thief. He's headed straight for Dodge, Chester. We'll find him there. Uh, right now, let's get us a little of that water. This is it, L&M Filters, 
It stands out from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. L and M's got everything. It's the best. No other cigarette gives you L and M's assurance. Assurance that it is best. L and M's got everything. Superior filter. Superior taste. Superior filtration. Because of L and M's superior filter. White. All white. Pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of l and superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. Buy l and today, America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it, l and filters. l and has got everything. It's the best. I found him, Mr. Dillon. Oh, where, Chester? Moss Grimmick stable. He rode in yesterday. He ain't even trying to hide him. Ah, uh-huh. You, uh, sure it's the same, too? Oh, I'd know him anywhere. Besides, that wine glass brand stands out like a pulled gat at a picnic. <laughs> okay, Chester. Um, you keep an eye on the street here. I'll start with a long branch. See you later, Chester. Back. Oh, just long enough to get cleaned up a little bit. Oh? How have you been? No, you didn't come here to ask me that, did you? <laughs> well, not entirely, no. <laughs> Something going on, Matt? Uh, Kitty, I'm looking for a man who came to Dodge yesterday with a pair of thoroughbreds. He's tall and, uh, well, he wears about the finest clothes that have been seen around here since Bill Hickok was last in town. Uh-huh. His name's Portis, Matt. Jack Portis. Ah, oh, I thought you might know him. <laughs> the only man I ever came to Dodge that I didn't meet never quite got here. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost your trail there, Kitty. Oh, I'm thinking of that cowboy who got shot just outside of town last year. Oh. oh. You remember? Yeah, huh? yeah, I remember. I, uh, I'm more interested in Jack Portis, though. So. Oh. Well, I, I don't know much about him. Except that he's a real free spender, and he's already made himself a lot of friends. Uh-huh. Nobody can pay for a drink when he's around. He got money, too, huh? Well, besides those horses, you mean. I hear they're pretty fancy animals, Matt. Yeah, real fancy, Kitty. Well, nothing's too good for Portis. Oh, Matt? Yeah, I see you. How are you, Kitty? Portis? Hello. I see nobody shot you in the back yet, Portis. No. Anybody got a reason to? You know my name, but I don't know yours, mister. It's Dillon. Marshal Dillon. Hmm. I'll be darned. Why didn't you say so out there? Now, you were in too big a hurry for much visiting. The way you two men looked, I wasn't taking chances. How'd I know you weren't going to shoot me for them horses? Uh-huh. Did, uh, you shoot somebody for him? So that's what you're thinking. Where'd you get him, Portis? I raised him. Where? I own a spread on the Washita River, Marshal. Oklahoma Territory? That's right. That's a long way from here. Oh, I ride off every once in a while, spend some money, have a little fun. No harm in that. Sure. Now, you're saying that the wine glass is your brand, huh? Of course it is. Look here. Got a burn right on my hat band. Uh, see? Uh-huh. You believe me now? It could be true. You're about the most suspicious man I ever met. Well, I'm paid to be. Sure. 
I understand. Uh, buy your drink now? Some other time, huh? It'll be my pleasure. So long, Marshal. I'll see you later, Kitty. Sure. Don't you believe him, Matt? Yeah, I guess I do, Kitty. Oh, but you're not real sure, huh? It could be that he's just a whole lot smarter than I am. Doc. Oh, hello, Chester. And Matt. Come on, sit down, Doc. Yeah, how are sit you? Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> now, we just finished, but you can have our table. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, well, what'd you eat? We had the chicken, but stay away from it, Doc. Oh, is that so, Chester? It's no good. Huh? Oh, it tasted like it had been boiled with the feathers on. Oh, well, I, I never heard of cooking chicken that way. Say, that might be worth trying. All right, you don't leave me. Go right ahead. <laughs> no, 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 Chester. When it comes to food, you can be trusted completely. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, who's having the party over there? That's Jack Porter's, as usual. Porter? Oh, that fella. Even at noon, huh? He's been here a whole week, and he hasn't lacked for company one second of it. Oh, a man who spends money the way he does picks up friends like a dog does fleas. <laughs> well, he's bound to run out of money one of these days. Yes, Doc. I hear he hasn't gone into a saloon yet without buying drinks for the house. You know, a man like that could maybe be president someday. Oh, now, Chester, you don't seem to hold the highest office in the land in much esteem, Chester. Well, now, I like Portis, Doc. He's a fine fellow. But I was talking about how you think a man becomes president. Well, getting folks to like him is one way, ain't it? Yeah, well, I won't argue with that. No, no. Well, I can't sit here all day and listen to you two. Yeah, it's not likely you'd learn anything worthwhile if you did. Uh, I better go, too, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for your advice about the chicken, Chester. Oh, that's okay, Doctor. So long. So long, Doc. <laughs> Dylan? Yeah, Chester. If you haven't got nothing for me to do, I might go on down to the depot later on. Uh-huh. Well, you can go now if you like. Oh, no, it, it's too early. Santa Fe ain't due in till mid-afternoon. Oh, I see. Well, well go then. I, I wouldn't want a train to arrive without you being there to greet it, Jim. Well, now, it ain't a pure waste. You never know who might get off one these days. <laughs> Pretty girl, maybe, huh? Now, now, I'm serious, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, now, but what I mean is... Hey, look, there's them thoroughbreds across the street there. Oh, uh, yeah. Who's the boy leading them? Uh, Myron Marweedle. He's a kid Portis hired to give him a run once in a mm-hmm. while. Well, you can't say he doesn't take good care of him. No, sir. There's Portis coming now. He's going to show him off to his friends. Yeah, he's got a right to be proud of him. My, I wished I was rich like him. I hear he's got two rooms at the Dodge house, just in case he runs into somebody who needs a bed. <laughs> well, now, there's a real friend for you. Hey, look at him rare. Right yeah, that's him. all horse. Oh, I seen him, I tell you. Don't yell about it. I believe Well, I want you to know it's... Uh... Well, you sure take up a lot of room. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't start trouble, Burke. Well, I'm starting no trouble. He was standing in the way. A man stands in the way. You got a right to move him, ain't you? Is that fella drunk or just ornery? I don't know. Have you seen him around here before, Chester? Mm-mm. They're strangers to me. And from the looks of them, I'd just soon keep it that way. Yeah, well, you've got your choice. What? They're getting mounted. Looks like they're moving on. Mm. Hey, those are pretty fair horses they got, too. Hey, Chester. Yes, sir. Did you see those brands? Why, them's wine glass horses, too. Yeah. Hey! Men! Hold it! Uh, they don't hear you. All right, let's go get our horses. We'll follow them. Well, now, what about Portis? We ought to tell him. They didn't tell him. Come on. I 
That's a camp they got there, Mr. Dillon. They ain't trying to run. No. Well, doggone if I can figure it. Yeah, they've seen us. Okay, we'll ride right up to them, Chester. Yes, sir. Yeah. You looking for something, mister? What's your friend's name, Burke? My name's Keller. Not that I take to strangers asking. Well, there's no need for us to be strangers. There's just a proud foot. I'm Matt Dillon. Dillon? With a marshal? Yeah, that's right. What are you doing down here, marshal? What'd you follow us for? I got interested in your horses. Why? Now, there's a man in Dodge with two wine glass horses. Yeah, we know that. Well, all right, keep talking, Burke. Go ahead, tell him. All right. That's Jack Portis. And he stole them horses, Marshal. Stole some money, too. Uh huh? Where? An outfit down on the Red River. Oklahoma Territory? Sure. Whose outfit? My uncle's. He killed him, Marshal. Yeah. He killed Burke's uncle, and he run off with what money he could find in them two thoroughbreds. And we followed him here. Long trail, but we found him. I see. Now, what do you aim to do now? We aim to take him. What else? Oh, well, what are you waiting for? We're figuring a way to do it. Yeah. The smart one, that tortoise. Why didn't you come to me about this? Well, ordinarily we would have, Marshal. Well, what do you mean? Well, you think we'd ride all this way after nothing but a horse thief had stolen a little money? Now, Keller told you. He killed my uncle, Marshal. That makes it different. Not to me, it doesn't. Well, it ain't your kin he killed. You stay here, Burke. Both of you stay here. You can ride back and see Portis in a half an hour. He'll be at the jail. Other Cigarette gives you L&M's assurance. Assurance that it is best. L&M gives you superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white. All white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to l and superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. No other cigarette gives you l and assurance, assurance that it is best. l and has got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try l and today. Dodge House, he ain't the Lady Gag, and he ain't at the Texas Trail. Yeah, we'll go down to the Long Branch next, Hester. Sure going to be a surprise when he finds out his game is up, ain't it? Hey, what's that crowd doing down there? I don't know. Uh-oh. They're spreading out. Must be a fight, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, come on.
pay it to that fellow Burke. See him? I should have left you to watch him. There's Keller, too. And Portis. Oh, looks like they killed him. Yeah. All right, stay back, Chester. Did you kill him, Burke? It was my job, Marshal. I told you that. And you ain't going to arrest me for it. No. Fort is Drew first, Marshal. It was self-defense. I didn't see it. Asked anybody who did see it. All right. No. Wait. They may be friends of his. They'll lie. They weren't friends of his a minute ago. They didn't back him up, did they? Well, it's different now. They'll back him up now. You're in bad trouble, Clark. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? What are you doing here, Kitty? Hello, Matt. She's seen the whole thing. She was standing right over there, Mr. Dillon, and she says... All right, all right, Chester. Let's hear it from her. Yes, sir. Oh, wait a minute. How do we know she ain't a, a friend of his, too? She'd tell the truth even if she was. All right, go ahead, Kitty. What happened? Well, I didn't hear what was said, Matt. But I saw what happened, plain enough. And? It looked like he was calling Portis out. And then Portis went for his gun. And Burke shot him. Yeah. And it was self-defense. I told you that, Marshal. I wasn't lying. There wouldn't have been a killing if he had stayed in camp like I told you. Well, the murderer died sooner or later. Burke. Yeah. You go on back to Oklahoma. And you stay there. I'm taking them horses with me. Take them. Take them and get out. Come on, Burke. Let's go. Yeah. Fortis was a bad one after all, huh? Yeah, I guess so, Kitty. If he hadn't been guilty, there'd have been no reason for him to draw first. He didn't seem bad. Well, you never know, Kitty. You just never know. I had Chester go through Porter's pockets, and he found he hardly had enough money left to pay for a coffin. So his big party had been about over anyway. But at least he'd had a fine time while it lasted. And everybody who'd enjoyed it with him felt even though he was a killer, it was better he got shot than hung. And that was the end of it. Except for one thing. And we didn't find out about that until a week later. Merciful goodness, it is just plain miserable out there, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what is it, Justin? The sun, the dust, and the heat. So why don't you stay inside? I'm going to now. Now, where you been? After the mail. Here. Nah. Uh. Yeah, there's not much here. Now, wait a minute. What's this? Oh, uh, well, that's for Jack Portis. There ain't no address on it where they could send it back to, so I said maybe I'd ought to bring it to you. Well, I don't know what to do with it. <clears throat> well, uh, it might say inside where you could send it back to. I don't like opening mail, Chester, especially that of a dead man. Well, what are we going to do with it, then? Now, wait a minute. Whoever wrote this doesn't know he's dead. And I guess it's up to me to tell it. I'll open it. What's the matter, Mr. Dillon? Uh, yeah, you read it. Well, I... Dear boss... I hope you've run out of money by now and are on your way back to the wine glass. 
Things is fine here, except the Washita's near dry and a couple of horses got stole. But they was not thoroughbreds. I'm keeping two pots of coffee on the stove in case you show up unexpected. Dugan. Oh, my goodness. Well, I made a bad mistake, Chester. Yes, sir. But Portis made one, too. How? Drawn first made him look guilty to us. But what happened was that he counted on his friends to back him up against those two. Mm, that Burke and Keller. They're mighty bold the way the road in here and got by with that. Yeah, we'll get a circular out on him right away. Yes, sir. And I'll write his man, Dugan. What are you telling, Mr. Dillon? And I'll tell him two more wine glass horses got stolen. Thoroughbreds this time. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know what I like about L&M's is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Darn good smoke. See for yourself. L&M stands out from all the rest. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Lawrence Dobkin, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. What are you doing to help your children's education? Do not wait for the other fellow. Get in there and join your local organizations fighting for better schools. Maybe a year from now, you'll have done something to help. Ask your friends and neighbors to join in the fight for the future. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Smoother, cooler, milder, Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you. They satisfy. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfields made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Watch an entirely different Gunsmoke show tonight on your local CBS television station. Remember, Gunsmoke on TV tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And be sure and listen to Gunsmoke again on radio next week, transcribed for L&M Filters.